The CFM Leap and Pratt & Whitney PW1000 are two of the most successful jet engines currently powering the next generation of narrowbodies across the world. In this video, we'll compare both engines to understand why airlines may choose to configure their jets with a specific brand and model. We'll dive into the specifics and engine design that set these engines apart and fuel the gains in efficiency compared to the engines of the last generation. The Pratt & Whitney GTF series engine is primarily found on the Airbus A320neo, while other variants are also used on the Airbus A220 and the Embraer E2 jet. Overall, the engine uses geared turbofan technology to optimize efficiency and lower noise levels. The GTF engine is able to generate up to 33,000 pounds of thrust, with a bypass ratio of 13 to 1. This compares to the CFM Leap's slightly lower bypass ratio of 11 to 1, which does provide a slight disadvantage in fuel efficiency. The Leap engine uses different technology to also achieve better fuel burn and efficiency stats, but overall is slightly less efficient. Before taking a look at maximum thrust for each type, we must examine the separate variants offered for varying aircraft. Before doing so, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I post twice weekly long form aviation videos and twice daily shorts. If you want to listen in to future videos and enjoyed this video thus far, hitting the like and subscribe button goes a long way. The most powerful version of the Leap engine is the Leap 1A, which is offered as an option on the Airbus A320neo. The most powerful GTF engine is the PW1000G, which is also offered on the A320neo series of jets. Less powerful versions of the Leap engine also power the 737 MAX, which is offered as the Leap 1B, and the Comac C919, which is offered as the Leap 1C. There are currently 3,700 Leap engines in service, with thousands more in an order backlog. As the Leap engine has a slight market share advantage over the PW1000 in the A320neo program, the backlog is quite extreme. Pratt & Whitney, on the other hand, also has a significant order book with around 12,000 units ordered. In general, the Leap program has been more popular because of its exclusive status with the Boeing 737 MAX. Carriers must choose the type when ordering the 737 MAX as no other option is available. This helps propel the Leap program into a league of its own, but also a backlog nightmare. So far, both engines have been reliable for the most part. However, it is quite early in each of the program's history. The PWGTF program has probably seen more reliability and design issues related to its complex gearbox design. Early on, airlines had issues with the durability of the gearbox itself and premature failure of certain components. Recently, the PW1500G, the variant powering the A220, also has had significant issues leading to widespread A220 groundings across the world. The early reliability issues have also been credited with pushing some airlines toward the LEAP program, even if the technology was not quite as sophisticated. This is a common theme when comparing both of these incredibly capable jet engines. The product offered by Pratt & Whitney does seem to carry small numerical advantages in almost every category. However, reliability and design issues seem to outweigh these benefits in the eyes of some airlines. That being said, most airlines ordered their engines significantly before any of these issues came to light. This is also why the PW1000 series is still a very popular engine overall. Thankfully, thousands of orders are still outstanding for the type. This means that hopefully Pratt & Whitney can put together improvements for the engine to prevent the current issues. So, which engine is superior? Well, clearly each airline has good rationale for selecting which type to order. For some, it is of necessity if ordering the Boeing 737 MAX. And for others, the choice is made because of past history with each manufacturer or strategic planning. From a technical perspective, I would give the edge to the PW GTF program, but with the caveat of needed improvements in design and durability. Do you agree with this assessment? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and will consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Also, if you're here in the first week after upload, consider hitting the hype button as well. All your support is very much appreciated and allows more videos like this one to be published. 
Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next.